If you would open your Bibles, Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, beginning with verse 1 and then verse 2. Notice, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, you and all this people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. And I simply want to speak the title, Expired. Expired. For some reason, we are in a season, and I am hearing the word of God spoken to me as to what to speak to you. Last year, the Lord said to me that we would be entering into a season of sudden changes, sudden changes, a season of change. Whenever there is change, change always means death of the old, birth of the new. Death of the old, birth of the new. That's why a lot of people resist change because every time something changes, the way that it used to be dies to you. It becomes expired. Moses was Moses, but Moses' tactics were not relevant for Joshua. Is it to say that Moses was wrong? Absolutely not. Moses was who God called Moses to be in the time and in the generation of Moses. But you must understand that Moses was not a warrior, he was a negotiator. And God used Moses to go to Pharaoh and negotiate with him. He didn't fight at all, God fought for him. But it takes one type of deliverer to deliver people out and another type of deliverer to bring them in. So the tactics of Moses expired when Moses died. God was saying, I don't need another Moses. I need a Joshua. I need a young warrior who's not afraid to fight. Because you can't negotiate people out of their homes. When they own the home and you come in and say, God said this is our land and somebody's already living there, you got to fight. He needed a warrior in Joshua. So God's announcement to Joshua saying, Moses, my servant is dead, was saying that era of that type of leadership is dead to you. That's not for you, Joshua. But I'm the same God who was with Moses, and so I will be with you. But I want you to learn me for this new season. And I'm so glad Moses did not leave Joshua any instruction manual telling him how to do it because it would have been outdated because there was no Pharaoh for, jo uh, for uh, Joshua to go and negotiate with to try to get the people in. Moses had an anointing to bring them out. Joshua had an anointing to bring them in, but it took a different type of leader. And Joshua is a different leader. And when God expires what he wants to do and needs to do in, in a Moses, then there's, we, have, we must trust him to do what he needs to do in the Joshua generation. So there are certain things that will expire in your life. And I want you to hear God today because there are some things that are expired in your life and you're still hanging on to. There was a lady whose husband had read an article in the paper. Her husband had died and she had kept his body still sitting up in the house. Hadn't told anybody. Didn't know how to let go of dead things. Something that had already expired. Everything has an expiration date. Everything has an expiration date. Even if you still have something uh, and, and you think that it has not expired, it's not the way, exactly the way that it used to be because everything has an expiration date. I mean, when a woman conceives a child and that fetus is growing in her womb, 
this embryo that starts there, it has an expiration date for how long it can stay in her womb. It can't stay in there forever. Wouldn't it be crazy if she had an eight-year-old child still in her womb? No, it has an expiration date. It's, it, it, the gestational period is approximately nine months. And at that expiration date, it's, it's the, it can no longer remain in the body. It has to get rid of it. It has expired in its incubator. It has to get out. As a child grows up in your home, uh, when they get in their latter teen years, they get grown and they have an opinion. You know, it's, it's easy when they are young and you just lay their clothes out and tell them, put this on, baby, and eat this. But when they start telling you, I don't want to eat that. I don't want to wear that. You get to a certain, I don't want to go over here. I don't, it's time for somebody to get up out of your house. Their time has expired. Have you ever thought about the fact that fruit, as it grows out on a tree, it, it's not, whatever the tree produces, it can only hang in there for so long until either someone picks it or it will fall off due to maturity. And everything that you produce has an expiration date where it will be expired in terms of its time with you. And you've got to know how to release things that have expired. When Moses is dead, he must be left with God. And don't try to carry that into the promised land with you. Uh, as you will notice, uh, the very familiar passage of Scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 through 7, I want you to just notice how different things have expiration. To everything there is a season and a time, a designated time for every purpose under heaven. That means time reaches a certain expiration point. There is a time to be born and then there's a time to expire, a time to die. There's a time to plant and then there's a time to pluck up what is planted, its expiration date. There's a time to kill, there's a time to heal. Notice, there's a time to break down, there's a time to build up. There's a time to weep, there's a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. There's a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace, there's a time to refrain from embracing. There's a time to gain and there's a time to lose because it has expired in your life. There's a time to keep and there's a time to throw away a time to get rid of what has expired there's a time to tear and a time to sow there's a time to keep silence and there's a time to speak can you see that there's a time to get rid of things that have expired in your life that god gave to you it's not a denial of the fact that god gave it to you but god bless me with this job maybe you weren't supposed to die there Maybe what was a blessing of God has served its season to everything, to everything, to how many things? Yeah. Everything. There is a season. There's a season. There's a season. And that's my baby. That's my baby. Your baby don't want to be with you forever. <laughs> to everything, there is a season. Somebody shout expired. You got to know when to deal with stuff that has expired in your life because if you start consuming stuff that is expired, it will make you sick. It'll give you diarrhea. It'll nauseate your stomach when you consume something that is beyond its expiration date. It will start stinking on you. And that's how you know that it is expired. Something that used to be sweet when it was fresh. But when it expires on you, it's time to throw it out, to discard it. There's a time to gather things together. There's a time to let it go. There's a time to understand what to do with things that have expired in your life. Well, when something has served its time in your life, or when somebody has served their time in your life, I want you to grieve as necessary. You can go ahead and grieve. It's okay to grieve. Grieving is a part of, of the healing process. Go ahead and grieve as necessary. Whenever something has served its time in your life, you can grieve for it. Oh, that was my favorite car. Some of you, you're still dealing with, a, with, a, with an old car now, the kind that you have to talk to. <laughs> come on, Betsy. Come on, Nellie. You, you, if you get in, you're trying to, you know, you get in, and you, you, when you turn the ignition, you, you don't know what's going to happen, but you have to sort of give them a pep talk. Come, come on, baby. And you're pumping the gas. Come on, come on. Come on for mama. Cr crank it. Come on. <laughs> Anybody had, had to have a conversation with your car, had to talk? 
Well, when something has served its time in your life, grieve as necessary. Grieve as necessary. That was a good call. That call, boy, we got some, we created some wonderful memories. They took me a lot of different places. Grieve as necessary. Secondly, thank God for the time that you had it. If it's a person, thank God for the time that you had him or her. Thank God. Grieve as necessary, then thank God for the necessary, for, for, the, for the time that you had together. Thank God that he did give it to you. And then reflect on what has been learned or gained. Reflect on what has been learned or gained as a result of it. Reflect on what has been learned. Reflection, reflection turns experience into insight. Reflection turns experience into insight. But reflect on what has been learned or gained. Don't just live through life and fail to learn the lesson and gain from things that you have experienced. Because it means you're going to have to take that lesson over. And then I would say, move forward to your specific destination. When something has served its, its uh, time in your life, move forward to your specific destination. To expire means to come to an end. It means to come to an end. It means to cease to be valid, typically after a fixed period of time, that it's no longer valid. Sometimes people have come into your life and they assume that because y'all used to be like this, that you're supposed to be like that forever. Things change. People grow. And when they grow or you grow and they don't grow with you, you have to change from them. Or at least the amount of time that you were given them, the closeness in proximity, in relationship. Relationships are all spatial. And, and, and they're given proximity in your life according to the purposes that God has designed for you. So to expire means to cease to be valid, typically after a fixed period of time. It was good for that season. And also to expire means to breathe out. You inspire to breathe in, you expire to breathe out. Expire. So when it's talking about expiring, it means that we breathe out. Expiration is always a signal for something new. Whenever you breathe out, every time you exhale, it's a signal to inhale new air, new oxygen. Do you realize that the cloud of God's glory is uh, uh, over your life? It is a moving entity. The cloud was a moving entity. God led them by a pillar of cloud by, by uh, day and a pillar of cloud a pillar of fire by night. He led them. That means that it was moving. You can't be led by something that is static. You can only be led by something that is dynamic, moving, and ongoing. God is a moving thing. He's a moving thing. You see him as you open up the book in Genesis chapter 1, and the Spirit of God moved on the face of the deep. And even the last verses of Revelation, even so, come Lord Jesus. He's always on the move. God is a moving thing. When you walk with God, your life will go through various vicissitudes. You grow through changes. When you walk with God, God's not going to leave you the same that he found you. And there are certain times that he has to say, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I thought as a child, I understood as a child. But when I became mature, a man, I put away childish things that have expired in my life that I got too old for. It is expired and there are some people that are still playing childish games. Middle age in their 30s and 40s and 50s and still playing games. <laughs> still playing games. Uh, you know, adolescents, middle-aged folks, still playing games. But God is a moving thing. And listen, here's my advice to you. Refuse to remain where God used to be. Refuse to remain where God used to be. Refuse it. Refuse to remain where God used to be where he used to be. The child, we used to have church. <laughs> Something happened though, didn't it? Refuse to remain where God used to be. Move with the cloud. Move with the cloud. Move with the cloud. Because the expiration of one signals the birth of another. You've got to be able to recognize when something or someone has expired in your life. God breathed into us. He inspired us so that we can expire and thus inspire others. It is uh, whatever inspiration that God has breathed into me, I can't get it to you unless I expire. 
So every time that we speak, we release pneuma, breath, spirit. We have to expire to release that. And so when you release what you've been inspired with and expire that to others, they become then inspired. And that's why we're called to expire. We've got to release it. We've got to let go whatever God has given into us. And not only do we suffer when we fail to expire, but we also suffocate in the smallness of our airtight world. But everything has a season. Everything has a season before it will expire. Everything has a season. That's why Acts chapter 13 and verse 6 says this, For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and saw corruption, his, his body decaying. But notice, after he served his own generation by the will of God, he served his generation by the will of God and then fell asleep and was buried with his fathers. After Moses served the men of his generation, he fell asleep. He expired after he had served the will of God in his generation. After you serve your generation, God will take you home. You don't serve the next generation, you serve your generation. You serve, you do the assignment that is on your life. That's why Jesus said, I must work the works of him that has sent me while it is day, because the night comes when no man can work. He was saying that there's going to come a time when you will become ineffective in what you're anointed to do right now. You got to run while the anointing is on you. You got to do while, while you got the energy, while you got the presence of mind to be able to do it right while it's on you. And, and just realize that every good idea has an expiration date signaling a better idea. Every good idea has an expiration date signaling a better idea. So don't ever marry yourself to your idea because when your idea becomes outdated, then you'll take it personal. Somebody's always going to come up with a, something better. Why do you think companies put on their product new and improved? Suppose the person who came out with the first one said, well, I don't see what's wrong with this one. He was still working. I mean, why fix it if it ain't broke? And they live with that type of philosophy. But how do you ever make anything better? Thank God that we've got better automobiles now than the first, you know, Model T Ford, Model A, all, you know, those things. You know, those things didn't have air conditioning. They didn't have heat on the inside. They didn't, I mean, you know, their seats were not as comfortable. You couldn't just press a button. They had manual windows. They, they didn't have any power steering. Thank God that people made improvements on stuff. Thank God, ladies, that you're not having to be out with a washboard in a number 10 tub trying to wash clothes. Some of y'all don't even know how to work a clothespin and clothesline. Something wrong with the wrong machine. I pressed the button. I pressed it twice. There's something wrong with it. Anybody know the thing about having a little cord, you know, in your bathroom and having clothes? Anybody know about how the freshness of having clothes hang on a line outdoors and sunshine and you can smell? Anybody know what I'm talking about? But certain things expire when something better comes along. Certain things expire ex expire a and just remember this thought that you can never start off doing something as well as it can be done you'll never ever start off doing something as well as it can be done never have you ever noticed even how uh you buy a bottle of water and even water has an expiration date on it can i teach you something for just a moment it is not that water ever expires because water does not expire. The water in the ocean never expires. The water in the river never expires. May I tell you something? The water in your water bottle does not expire. Then why put an expiration date on it? So they can make you buy some new water. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Do you know why they make, put an expiration date on a bottle of water? You know why? because the bottle expires and it becomes dangerous it will begin to leach into the water after a certain expiration date it's not that the water has expired 
It is that the bottle that carries the water expires. My God, the water is the anointing. The anointing never expires, but the vessel that carries. Anointed men die, anointed women die, but the anointing still lives, never dies. The water never expires. The expiration date is only for the bottle. Everybody's water bottle has an expiration date. Even though the water that you carry is fresh as ever, fresh as ever. Uh, you may not realize this, but in 2 Kings chapter 13, can I take you to Bible school for just a moment? 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 14 through 20. I want you to notice Elisha. This is the man that did twice the miracles of Elijah the prophet. Twice the miracle. This man had an ability incredibly with God. But Elisha had become sick with the illness of which he would die. He was anointed. He was anointed, but he got sick with the illness that, with which he would die. His bottle had an expiration date on it. And then Joash, the king of Israel, came down to him and wept over his face and said, Oh, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. And Elisha said to him, Take a bow and some arrows. And so he took himself a bow and some arrows. And then he said to the king of Israel, Put your hand on the bow. And so he put his hand on the bow. And Elisha put his hands on the king's hand. He's old and he's sick unto death, but he's still anointed. And he said, open the east window, and he opened it. And then Elisha said, shoot, and he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. He says, for you must strike the Syrians at Aphek uh, till you have destroyed them. And then he said, take the arrows. And so he took them. And he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. And he struck three times and stopped. And the man of God, Elisha, was angry with him. And he said, you should have struck five or six. Then you would have struck Syria till you have destroyed it. He says, but you will have to strike Syria. He says, but now you will strike Syria only three times. Then Elisha died and they buried him. Right up to the point that the man died, the man prophesied with incredible accuracy. But he was sick unto death. His water bottle had an expiration date, but the water in him was still prophetically on point to the point that he died. And it was just as he said. They won three wars against Syria, but they didn't wipe them totally out because he stopped too short. And the prophet of God, anointed, still had fresh water in him, but his bottle was expired. The water is the anointing in you. So don't be afraid to get rid of bottles that have expired. Don't be afraid of it. And then you let the water flow somewhere new. Let the water flow somewhere new. You know what Socrates said? He said, the secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. There are too many people that spend too much of their time fighting the old, still hung up over an ex. Let me just tell you, your ex, they're not thinking about you. You're angry and resentful, let it go. Ask the Holy Spirit to cleanse you, to wash you, because you don't want to be held down by somebody who has moved on and not even thinking about you. It's expired, expired, let it go. Let it go, let it go. Don't let it mess up your water. Don't let it mess up your water. You have to realize though that to everything there's a season, a season and a time for every purpose under heaven, but you have to know when your time is not yet up because you don't want to throw away things that have not yet expired. It's not over until God says it's over. Don't let things expire on you prematurely. You have authority. You know, part of the blessings of God is that uh, length of days and long life will come to you. You know, when he talks about, and you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and your water, and he will take sickness out of the midst of you, and the number of your days you shall fulfill, Exodus chapter 23, verse 25 and 26. When he says that to you, he's telling you that so that you don't die prematurely, that he will bless your bread and your water, and the number of your days you shall fulfill, and if something starts threatening something, your life, before you have fulfilled your days, you have authority in the word of God to be able to rebuke that thing in the name of Jesus. The great tragedy in life is not death, 
but it's failure to live while you have breath. Failure to live while you have breath. Don't expire before you die. The real question here is not who are you? That's the result of taking time to identify the material of which you are made. The real question is who will you decide to become? Who will you decide to become? And now is the time to demote your past from being your master to now being your new servant. And may I ask you this question? Who made you believe that you are to be defined by your weaknesses rather than by your strengths? How dare you define yourself by your weaknesses instead of by your strengths? You are not your weakness. Define yourself by your strength. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Don't define yourself by your weaknesses. Define yourself by your strengths. I close with Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 through 14. Paul, writing the church at Philippi, says, Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. He says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do is forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward, forgetting and reaching, forgetting and reaching forgetting and reaching I press forgetting and reaching I press you got to realize what is expired in your life thank you for watching power for living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner join us again